Uh, here we're going to take a look at many of the changes in the mission editor. Now the mission editors had some massive, massive differences from the earlier versions of command. Uh, first of all, not only do we create missions now, but you'll notice the mission screen itself has been cleaned up and multiple units have gone ahead and been brought onto different pages rather than being buried in different menus. Another item you're going to notice is uh, when we select different types of options, not only is it going to go ahead and show you what the unit is, it's also going to preview what style mission that it's on. So if you're, for example, looking for air superiority aircraft, we can now see the preview of that before we actually click on it and go ahead and take a look at it that way. So in this case, we're setting up a pretty straightforward strike mission where we're assigning some units to be escorts. We now have the ability to go ahead and define what time we'd like to go ahead and establish a target. The system is also smart enough to notify you if you try to create a situation that is impossible. For example, a unit is uh, too far away or won't be able to reach a particular target in time. It'll automatically notify you that of right away as you're actually building the mission itself. The mission settings have uh, stayed mostly the same as far as most of this goes. We have the ability now, of course, to uh, define all the key elements as far as refueling. We also have some ability to go ahead and define things like our different attack methods, which allow us to cause the, uh, like the whole flight to break up. We can pre-generate flight plans. Uh, once we've done that, of course, we can uh, pop back over to the main screen. And you can actually see exactly what the flight plan that particular unit will fly before it actually gets itself into the air. Now, if I want to, we can go ahead and uh, change this particular style, and we can update it dramatically, and it'll go ahead and generate new flight plans allowing us to preview all the different options that we want to take immediately rather than having to sort of uh, guess exactly what's coming up next. In this particular case, we're going for independent aim, and we can then, of course, establish anything else we need to do as far as your escorts. If we had specific ships, we could come in here and define those. If we had anything for targets, we, of course, could come in here and define what type of targets that we're interested in attacking. In this case, we'll get rid of the submarine pens. You can even define what happens with the actual mission itself. The WRA now has its own page here, so you can come in here and set the rules of engagement for that particular mission if you need to, specific for it. This, of course, is split between the MCON and WRA of the strikers, as well as the MCON and WRA for the actual escorts as well. In this case, we're turning on our automatic jamming. We can define specific restrictions for specific types of weapons, again, for the strikers versus the escorts, and all that's provided for us in one page rather than navigating through multiple menus as it was in the previous versions of Command. Now that our mission is all set up, we can see exactly a nice little preview of that down below. If I click away, of course, it's going to disagree everything, or disable everything, I should say. And we can actually now check all the individual units once they're ready to go. It's worth noting that right now we have a time of target of about 12.30. That's going to be the Zulu time, which is a significant amount of time. Another feature we've added, of course, is the flight plan editor, which is going to give you the ability to go ahead and edit flight plans directly on each mission after it's been generated. So in this case, I can go and do things like change what altitudes, I like the mission to activate at. I can change what speeds certain types of items happen at different points during their journey. I can even add in waypoints or subtract waypoints directly if I'm trying to create a specific strike pattern, for example, if I want to do things in a manual sort of way. Uh, one of the excellent uses for this, of course, is uh, setting a refueling point. So after you've gone ahead and defined, you know, exactly where your turns are and everything, we can order our aircraft or whatever we have in this particular thing to actually go ahead and drop themselves off at a specific point so that we can order that ourselves in order to keep everything uh, moving smoothly when you're creating a larger, more complicated operation. Another option we have here is the air tasking order, which will allow us to see all of our air missions at once, and you can see that we have a considerable amount of that. Now notice after we've launched the mission, since we requested that particular mission to be a strike that is going to come simultaneously, all these different aircraft will actually join up in holding patterns at the altitudes and times we asked for, then begin their actual strike pattern towards it. You'll see automatically, since we're using time on target, well, once the uh, long-range strikers get into range, they'll fire immediately. Once the closer short-range strikers get into range, uh, they will also try to time their attacks so that everything hits the ground at the intended time. We're going for a time of around 12.30. You can see the initial strikes come in basically within 15 seconds, which is a pretty good simultaneous attack, given there's so many different types of strikers with so many different types of weapons. Again, it's possible to also set a takeoff time as opposed to creating a time for the actual strike. 